guys, the situation here is it's rough. So I actually wanted to start filming this morning because Google Weather told me today is going to be a cloudy day. So I was like, this is an excellent day to film outside. And when I opened up my eyes this morning, it was the sunniest day that South Africa has ever experienced. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just wait like a couple of hours and like, wait for the sun to set. And now, now the wind is coming here. Like I wish I could show you. I will insert a picture here if I have one of the setup that I have going on here. So I hope that you can hear what I am saying. I hope that my underwear isn't showing because I'm not really a dress person, but I thought that it was fitting. Oh, you know, that's like total first world problems. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than the videos that I usually post. So usually I post obviously videos that are super entertaining, a lot of energy, you know, a lot of comedy, or at least I hope so. I think I'm funny. So I hope that you guys think I'm funny. I thought that today I would just have a bit more of a sit down and talk video with you guys while we are tasting tea. I'm actually very excited about this because I love tea. No, 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 no. I have traditional afternoon tea and then I have Lady Grey tea. I have Earl Grey tea. I have Prince of Wales tea and then I have lemon twist tea. And we're going to be eating chocolate muffins that I definitely didn't make myself. <laughs> I went to Willy's this morning and I bought it. But, you know, it's still a chocolate muffin and it's still gonna taste good. I guess the light is going to change a lot as well because I have to film outside now because my whole set is up here and I had to wait the whole day seeing as it's already three o'clock in the afternoon. Let's start with traditional afternoon tea. So in my previous video, I obviously talked about being a godly woman and I talked about how being a godly woman isn't really, it's not about the stuff that you do, it's actually only about your heart's position. Obviously, like I said, that heart's position is a heart's position of humbleness. And we're going to let that steep a bit. There you go. That's a hunt, 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 hunt. I'm really enjoying sitting here eating. Glasses to eat? Oh, hi. See, it's this freaking wind. <laughs> I just wanted to do a bit more of an elaborate version of what a godly woman actually is. The core principle of being a Christian is the fact that you have humility and the fact that you are humble. I literally went and I searched for all of the Bible verses that talks about being a humble person. And you will never guess, but I found almost over, I think 110 different Bible verses that talked about humility and humbleness and how important that was to God. And let's start spilling the tea. No, we're gonna spill some real tea now, but we are going to be talking about some serious stuff here. So I'm not going to be drinking full cups because obviously I don't want to pee the whole day. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Oh, wow. This is a really, really soft tea. It's like almost creamy. It's like a smooth, creamy, velvety taste. Mm, I like this. Our generation irritates the hell out of me. Our generation has been taught that your opinion matters and how you feel about things matters. Nobody can tell you that your opinion is right or that your opinion is wrong. If you download an app, you have a platform to give your opinion. You have the ability and the power to influence people, to influence younger girls. If anybody disagrees with anybody's opinion, then it's like, you're homophobic or you're a racist. You can't say anything these days, but at the same time, you can literally say anything that you want. We love getting into arguments. This is especially something that I see among Christians. Christians arguing with Christians. If you open up Facebook, have you read what people say on there? Have you read how people talk to each other and about each other? And they're literally arguing with other Christians about literally the nittiest, grittiest, smallest, most irrelevant things. The amount of fights that I have seen people have about, is it correct to get a tattoo or not? Are women allowed to not wear head coverings? 
all women allowed to be pastors? Is this the right thing? Is that the right thing? Please don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm saying those things are not important, okay? The Bible does speak about these things, which means that God considered it important enough to tell us. Let's say, okay, it's important to wash your hair, okay? Obviously, it is gross if you don't wash your hair. It is unhygienic. Let's say your hair is dirty now and you're like, I have to go and wash my hair. And somebody is busy breaking into your house. Are you gonna sit there and be like, mm, no, you know, I have to wash my hair. It's important to wash your hair. You, you go ahead and you take whatever you want, darling. No, you're not going to do that because there's something else that quite desperately needs your attention that is a bit more important than you washing your hair. And that's exactly what we're doing. I'm not saying that stuff like divorce and tattoos and those kind of things are not important, but there are so much more important things out there. We seem to be focusing on everything except on that. If you go and you read in your Bible, the amount of times that certain verses appears in the Bible, the Bible verses that God talks about tattoos. There is literally one verse about that in the whole entire Bible. If you go look at the amount of times that humbleness is mentioned in the Bible, how many times God speaks about that? It is literally over a hundred times. You would think that people would realize that if God tends to mention something over and over and over and over again, it's probably going to be a bit more important than the stuff that he only mentions once. So it's not like the stuff that he mentions once is not important, but hell, that is all that we as Christians are focusing on. I'm just throwing in the rest of the tea that was so not graceful at all. <laughs> You need to realign your perspective. You need to realign what is important to you and what you are focusing on during your life here on earth. This isn't the kind of topics that Christians want to talk about. All that we hear now is, oh, God wants to bless you and God loves you and you can do whatever the hell you want because God loves you. Girl, girl, I'm serious, girl. This is definitely not coming out of a place of, oh, I'm so much better than you because I'm this humble person and I do all of these things correct and you need to start doing them correct. You need to be more like me. Please don't use me as a role model. Please go look at Jesus and use him as a role model. Everything that I'm talking about in this video is a process that God took me through this whole entire year. Actually, it was a knocking on my ass this whole entire year. Everything that I'm saying in this video is stuff that I have personally dealt with, stuff that I have done in my life, stuff that I've probably even done yesterday, and even stuff that I am still struggling with. We're never gonna be perfect. So you're never gonna be 100% humble. I'm not telling you to be perfectly humble, but I'm telling you that that needs to be your most important goal when it comes to being a Christian. And then our next tea that we're going to be tasting is the Earl Grey tea. So we're quickly going to be steeping that one. Oh, oh, this is gonna be definitely a more strong herbal kind of taste. In Philippians 2, the title of that whole chapter in the Bible says, have the attitudes of Christ. That verse is what describes Jesus' character to us. And we know that we are here to become more like Jesus. That whole passage, chapter, whatever, is speaking about humbleness and humility. That was Jesus' main characteristic. That was the core of who Jesus was. Everything that he did stemmed out of that. The important stuff that God talks about. You have to honor your parents. You have to love thy neighbor like theirself. You have to love God. You have to forgive people. You have to have grace with people. All of the fruits of the spirit, everything that God deems as important will stem out of you having a humble heart. You will forgive people easier if you have a humble heart. You will have more grace with people if you have a humble heart. You will love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you have a humble heart, our battle or our war is not against flesh, but it is against spirit. Your flesh and the Holy Spirit spirit that lives inside of you is literally at war every single day. Everything that your flesh wants goes against what the Holy Spirit inside of you wants. And everything that the Holy Spirit inside of you wants goes against what your flesh wants. If there's a dog fight and you starve one dog, but you feed one dog loads and loads of food, that dog is probably going to be the dog that's going to win because you fed that dog, you strengthen up that dog. If you feed your flesh on a daily basis, your flesh is going to rule over your life 
And if you feed your spirits the whole day, then your spirit is going to rule over your life. Humbleness is not something that comes naturally for us as humans. We don't have a humble nature. Human nature is selfish. Human nature wants what it wants. It only cares about itself. Humbleness is not just going to appear overnight. You're not going to pray once, oh God, please make me humble. And then you're suddenly a humble person. What was interesting to me here is that if you go read, I think there's maybe four, maybe five verses in the Bible that says, humble yourselves. So it doesn't say like, oh, you know, ask God to humble you. You have to make that your focus the whole day long, every single day. You have to take responsibility for being humble. Okay, this is definitely a stronger type of tea. Very nice actually, but it has a very like herbal taste. It's not as smooth as the other one. It's quite more of a strong, harsher tea. I will almost say like, it tastes like thyme and rosemary, just like very faintly, but I like it a lot. All it takes is one thought and then you are proud. You see a girl, she has on like a crop top or like a boob tube and she's wearing like a very short skirt. And immediately us girls, you look at her and you're like, why is she wearing that? At least I don't do that. I don't dress like that. I dress modestly. And immediately you've had a proud thought. Immediately you thought to yourself, I'm so much better than her because of my clothing. People have an absolute wrong idea of what being humble means. People's idea of what a humble person is, is they think that it's a girl who's shy and she's so sweet and she's very introverted and she's so soft and kind. The one that, I don't know, runs out and dances in the freaking rain and smells the flowers on the paving, I don't know. People truly do think that it's somebody like, huh? You know, almost like somebody that's kind of pathetic. Does that mean I'm the world's most unhumble person, the world's most proudest person because I'm not scared to speak up. I do have a loud voice. I love talking, I talk all the time. I'm super dramatic when I explain things. Does that mean that I'm now suddenly a proud person? Does that now suddenly make me a unhumble person? No. And you know, for a long time, I did think that. I did think that there was something wrong with me because I don't look like other YouTubers. And no hate, obviously, I love Jason Gabriel or Cayenne Tilton, but my personality is not the same as them. I'm very dramatic, very energetic. I came to a point where I didn't like that about myself because I thought that that made me an ungodly woman. I tried to change my personality to adapt so that I could look more like them. And I was like, this is what a godly woman is. God told me when I was on a fast. Janine, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? I gave you this personality. I made you love the stage. I made you love the spotlight. I made you love the camera. And now you're shying away from it because you have this worldly idea of what a godly woman is. And I was like, huh, huh. well, I feel very convicted right now. Humbleness is a heart's position. It's not an action. Humbleness is not about what you are doing. Humbleness is about where your heart is at while you're doing something. When you humble yourself and you humble your heart your actions will automatically start aligning with what is right if you want to see the fruit you have to sort out the roots your actions is not going to fix what is going on inside of your heart but what is inside of your heart is going to fix your actions people are so focused on actions because it's so much easier to fix an action than it is to fix a heart it's easy to when my mom comes to me and she's like will you please take your dish and put it in the dishwasher and then i'm sitting there and i'm like I'm very busy now. I don't have time now. I'm like, oh, but okay. And you go and you put it in the dishwasher and it's done. But it's a lot more difficult to change your heart to actually want to take the cup to the dishwasher and actually want to serve your mother in that way. That is difficult. And that is why people don't do it. The Pharisees, he said to the Pharisees, you are like white plastered tombstones. It looks so beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, there is dead, rotten, old bones. He calls them snakes. In Afrikaans, he says it's other gesichte, which means it's like snake faces. They do the right thing and they're so righteous. They're always on the street corners preaching, always telling everybody around them what exactly they're doing wrong. First at church, in the front seats, but on the inside, they are literally, they're rotting up. You cannot deny the importance of actions as well. You know that Bible verse, that super scary Bible verse that all of our Christians gets like a little bit of a chill when we read this Bible verse, when God says a lot of Christians will stand in front of me and they will tell me, but God, we driven out demons in your name. We did this, we did this. And then he's gonna tell you, go away from me. I never knew you. And then these people asked him, but 
why? And then he said, because you didn't do the will of my father. That shows you how important your actions is. He says, when I was thirsty, you didn't give me something to drink. When I was hungry, you didn't give me something to eat. When I was tired, you didn't give me a place to sleep. These people were like, when, when did you, when were you at my house? When, when did you ask me this? God told them, every single thing you did to another person, it was as if you did it to me. Actions are important as well. But let me explain this to you. Actions stemming out of the right place is important. God will be testing every single thing that you did because seeing as doing the will of the Father is very important, He will be testing that with fire. So what He will be testing with that fire is what was your heart behind doing this? Celebrities, they give a million dollar check to some kind of charity. Well done, everybody's like wow, but they did it for clout because they have a bad reputation and now they need something quickly so that people will like them again. You're disqualified. The fire will burn that action and it will be as if you never even did it. It will be as if you've never even given that money away. So if all of your actions look like that, that means that you never did the will of the Father. The next tea we will be tasting is Lady Grey tea. I hope that you can see that. So I'm guessing that this is going to be a lot softer than the Earl Grey because this is like the feminine version <laughs> of Earl Grey tea. Now we come to our third set of problem, I think. I hear it so many times where people are like, it's okay to go out clubbing every weekend because God understands my heart. He understands that I'm young and I just want to have fun. They're literally excusing their behavior because their heart was in the right place. If what you want goes against what God wants, you have to understand that there is something in your heart that needs fixing because the Holy Spirit inside of you will want what God wants. Then people are like, oh, so are you saying I'm gonna go to hell because I, I said a swear word? No, but your main purpose is not staying out of hell. You have to align your life with Jesus. You have to align your life with God. If you have a humble heart, you will want to align your life with what God wants for you. Okay, so we're gonna try the lady gray tea. We're going to do this a bit more gracefully. Ooh. Okay, this is definitely my favorite. This is like the Earl Grey, so you can taste the rosemary, thyme kind of stuff. It's very herbal, like a softer herbal. My bedtime as a child was eight o'clock at night. So my dad told me, eight o'clock at night, you go to bed. One time I asked him like, why can't I decide when I wanted to go to bed? And he was like, when you decide to go to bed at eight o'clock, then you can start deciding when you wanted to go to bed. And of course, as a little child, I didn't understand this. I was like, well, then basically, Basically, I'm not really making the decision because I'm choosing eight o'clock so he might as well have made the decision for me now that I'm older I understand that it was about a heart's position that's the same way that God is with us he wants you to want to do the right thing now we're going to move to Philippians 2 which is the Bible verse part of this and this is the most important thing of this whole video because this is the way that you are humble this is what the Bible describes as being humble this is Jesus's characteristic this is who Jesus was and we know that we need to be more like him. Make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and one purpose. So there pretty much all of us Christians have already failed because I have never seen two people who can argue as much as two Christians. We can't even decide on what is the truth. We can't even come to a conclusion about, oh, this is right and this is wrong. No, it's all about my opinion and how I feel about this verse. Don't be selfish and don't try to impress others. We as Christians will not do anything if it doesn't benefit us in some sort of way. Don't be selfish. Don't only do things because it benefits you. Sometimes just do stuff because it's gonna help someone else. Don't try to impress others. We live for the approval of people. We live to impress other people. We wanna show people our talents, our money, our success, how smart we are, the house we live in, the car we drive, the friends we have, the clothes we wear, how how good of a Christian we are. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Others, everybody. Others, the rest of the world. You have to think of yourself as below them and think of them as above you. And yes, even the non-Christians. You know, we tend to look down on people because they're not Christians. Or we look down on other Christians because they're not as advanced as we are. They haven't been a Christian that long. They're not as mature as I am. 
Like, oh please, God is telling you, you are not better than anybody on this planet. No matter how good of a Christian you think you are or how close of a relationship you have with God, you are not better than anybody. You're not better than that murderer. You're not better than that friend that betrayed you. You're not better than that boyfriend that cheated on you. You are not better than anybody. And it says here, don't only look out for your own interests, but look out for others' interests as well. It doesn't say don't look out for your own interests, like don't do stuff that will help you as well. But it says, don't only look out for that. At the beginning of this year, my boyfriend started a new business. Uh, shout out to Kakua Coworks. So like if you're in Poch at any time in your life, definitely go check them out. Obviously it was very hard for me because I live far away from him and we spent very little time at that point together. My love language nearest to gifts is quality time. Like I have to have quality time. But at that point, I knew that he was so busy. It wasn't that he didn't want to make time for me. He was starting a business. I shoved down what I wanted and I looked out for his interest even if it wasn't the best thing for me even if I wanted more I wanted to spend more time with him I just knew that for his interest and his heart that wasn't the best thing at that point though he was God he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to so even Jesus who was God didn't walk around and like oh yeah I'm the son of God bow down to me peasants I am the son of the living God and that is what we're doing I'm a Christian and I'm so much better than you because you're not a Christian I just want to tell you now the beginning of your humbleness is accepting the fact that being a Christian is not a status you know those people that's like no offense but you're actually really fat just because you said no offense doesn't mean that what you said was okay and that's what we're doing we're saying like Love the person, hate the sin, and then we think that suddenly makes everything that we're saying okay. We can say whatever we want, like you need to fix this, 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 because we said love the person, hate the sin. Please go and check your heart. He gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble position of a slave. Jesus didn't come to be served, he came to serve. You have to have a serving heart. You have to have a heart that wants to do things for people, that wants to help people. You have to have a heart of, oh, I see that my mom is really tired tonight. Let me make dinner instead, serving her. Oh, you know, I am feeling like a cup of coffee. Maybe I should ask her, does she want a cup of coffee as well? This was the best part for me because I think this is the golden ticket to being a humble person. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. We need to throw in some more tea for this one. <laughs> Jesus showed the ultimate form of humbleness by submitting to God, by being obedient to God until death. And that is the true humbleness of Jesus Christ. If you want to be humble, open up your Bible and start figuring out what God put in there that said, you should be doing this. At verse nine, it says that God elevated Jesus to the highest honor in heaven because he was so humble on earth. And there is multiple verses that says, those who exalt themselves, God will humble them. And those who humble themselves, God will exalt them. You will get an amazing reward. You will be exalted because of your humbleness. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. You have to have proof of your salvation. You have to carry the fruit of being a Christian. For God is working on you, giving you the desire and the power to do what he pleases. If you ask him, God will give you that desire to do what he wants you to do. And then it says, do everything, every single thing that you're doing, doing it without complaining, doing it without arguing. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God should. This is like a couple of things that I wrote down. I literally stick this page to my wall so that I can remind myself about this every day. But before we do this, we are going to taste our final tea. And that is our lemon twist tea. I'm so excited for this. I think I'm gonna make this one just in the car. Oh, the bag broke. Ay, ach doch. Okay, well, I'm still gonna drink this. I'll just sift it through my teeth. I'm gonna make this one in the cup. I love fruit teas. This is like characteristics of humbleness. So how you can actually like practically be a humble person. Be teachable, be influenceable, um, naturally seek advice from others. People think 
that they know everything. Nobody is too young to teach you something and you're never too old to learn something. I can be corrected without defending myself. It's extremely humbling to be like, sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me and move on from that. Let's taste our tea. This is my favorite. This literally tastes like tea with slices of lemon in. Rejoice when others are celebrated. Don't be jealous of fellow Christians. Let's say you're 18 and all of your friends are getting a car, but your parents can't afford it. Don't be jealous of those Christians, okay? Because that is like saying, oh, I deserve it more than you. Why did you get a car and I did it? Be happy for them. Rejoice for other people. Be happy for their happiness. No job is too small for you. You serve people, you will do anything. It doesn't matter. You don't see yourself above any job if somebody asks you to, to go clean a toilet in a bathroom you will go clean a toilet in the bathroom you have to pray and you have to read your Bible another one clearly admit your flaws and mistakes and failures if you were wrong admit it if there's something that you're not good at admit it it's humbling it's not the end of the world live to help others like I said have a serving heart humble yourself you're not too good to help people you are not easily offended i don't really want to swear on this but i say the word sh a lot i do it without thinking about it and my boyfriend told me you know you say that word a lot and my dad also came up to me and said you know you say that word a lot i wasn't immediately like why are you telling me this you you do this did you know that no i was like oh sh <laughs> and I was convicted and I'm re trying really hard to change it. It's not going well, but I'm really trying hard to change it. Having a thankful and grateful attitude. I actually have a video that I did about how to be happy. That whole thing is about thankfulness. Don't live with a sense of entitlement. Nobody owes you sh you don't deserve anything. You deserve hell. Everything else is a gift from God. Be quick to forgive and don't hold grudges. Have grace with people. The reason we don't forgive people is because we think we're better than them. We think, oh, I'm not gonna forgive you because I never would have done that. You hurt me and I never would have done that. You cheated on me and I never would have done that. Stop being conceited. Don't be confident in who you are. Be confident in who God is. I am a confident person, but I'm confident because of who God is through me. I'm not confident in my own abilities when people ask me where do you get your ideas for your YouTube videos I'm like in the shower God tells me in the shower every Sunday evening I don't have the ability to put up these videos I don't have the ability to do any of these things you are not able but God is able you are not able to do anything but you are able to do everything through Christ who gives you power that is the end of this video I'm so scared that this camera battery is going to die thank you so much for drinking tea with me and I will see you next Saturday Mwah. <laughs>